electric cars are cool. There's no two ways about it, but you know what would be even cooler is if everything was electric. Yes, let's get beyond the cars. Let's get into every other space and let's see how quick we can do it. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. <laughs> I've got, of course, uh, Randy here, hanging out with me, doing his yeah, you're, thing. You're, you're coming right. You're coming right into my field. You know, my dad was an electrical engineer. He worked on transformers his whole life. The most modern transformers out there. Uh, we tried to go all electric. We went to open houses that were touting, op- you know, all electric homes. Um, I had the I had a convection oven in my house 35 years ago. Uh, so the, you know, the all electric idea has been in my uh, in my life from. From conception, practically. That's why you're here is because uh, your father was an electrical engineer. And as we all know, that is genetically transmitted. So what we've got here is uh, it's hereditary. Planes, trains and monster diggers, the vehicles pushing the limits of electric power. That's a that's a fairly robust uh, piece of machinery here. It is. That's a very substantial piece. You don't even have to put a little person next to it. You can tell. This is uh, so, uh, this is great. This is the BBC, but I think it's meant uh, for, I don't know, um, the Claude Bucket uh, could fit more than 3,000 footballs in it. Wow. So, see, it's not just the Americans doing anything they can to avoid metric. Yeah, how about hamsters? Yeah, I still despise that metric because it assumes you pack them in oh. dead. Oh. So... When I was when I was unaware of Elon's joke, someone asked me to measure Giga Texas in hamsters, and I did it with walkways and reasonable stacking and traditional habitat sizes. And uh, and the guy goes, uh, "No, it's this many," because Elon did the math cubically. I'm like, "Well, that's bad engineering." Uh, so we're not sacrificing performance when you go electric. Uh, while the diesel excavator guzzles more than 88 gallons an hour. The electric alternative relies instead on a chunky power cable. (laughs) So does that mean it's plugged in? Well, at any rate, at any rate, uh, last year or earlier this year, I had a chance to go to the Caterpillar uh, Mm. thing, their, their, their booth at CES and see this is a piece of mining equipment. Mm -hmm. And what advantages do you suppose you have when you're, when you're using that electric device instead of a diesel power device underground? Well, you would have massive advantages because you don't have to have a diesel fuel source on your, on your, at your facility because otherwise are you going to bring in a diesel truck filled with diesel, I suppose, to fill it up from time to time. Uh, you don't have to have, uh, you're going to have way less noise. You're going to have way less fumes. Uh, you're going to have, uh, I mean, the list goes on. And I, th- on. I thought those were the big ones. I didn't think of the noise. You're right. Diesel underground would be loud. Huge. But I knew the fumes. I said fume mitigation must be uh, greatly alleviated. You said, yeah, the, a diesel boat where you, if you're sitting close to the, the, the motor on smoke a smokestack. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's the worst. And he said, no, the biggest benefit is there's no, less need for heat mitigation. Oh, wow. Okay, the heat yeah. gets trapped. Yeah. yeah. So uh, there and the beauty is, you know, if the if it's right for you, you know, if it works for your application, here's how close we are to power. This isn't going to work or it's definitely going to work. You right. know, all your all your use cases. So the reason I came to all of this is because of this little story about Bluebird delivering its two thousandth electric school bus. Yeah. Yeah, in Macon, Georgia, the Bluebird Corporation has uh, hit that milestone. Now, they're still quite expensive because they're still new. 2,000 is not that many. Yeah. Um, it's uh, powered by the electric power drive 7,000 system from from Cummins. Now, I did get to uh, talk with a gentleman from Cummins at the fully charged event in San Diego two years ago, and... He really wanted to tell me about this, but he couldn't. And he said, I can't, I can't tell you about it because they're our customer. And, uh, but, uh, what I can tell you is we are making powertrains for electric school buses that much. I can tell you and head to the, to the internet and do a quick search and it will become very apparent to you, which company it is that's buying them from us. Um, 
this is great. This is what we wanted to see. Now, the question is, how expensive do you think they are? Is the price there? Are we ready for it? What do you think? I would think that over all, over time, these will be way less expensive than any other kind of bus. But maybe initially, because the quantities aren't there, they will be more expensive, but it can't be that much more than we'll buy them. That's all, that's all I can help. And I don't know what a school bus costs, but it was, what does a school bus, what does a normal school bus cost? Diesel school bus, about 150000 All right. So that sounds kind of like a, a diesel uh, semi. About yeah. 2500 right? Yeah. So I'm going to so, guess that these electric buses are going to come around. Well, you too late. You, you're already showing the number. Yeah. So diesel, 100 It says here 100 but I've seen numbers more like 150 Electric, 350 What? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Makes sense. There's no economies of scale yet. Uh, yeah. And then, of course, this factor, well, but grant funding, we've got 167,000 in grant funding, yes. which is great. So that means you're going to save, uh, you're going to save here 83,000, which is, as you'll notice, half the amount of the grant. Okay. So if the, if the grant, if this grant was cut in half, um, they would just break even. And that's including uh, all all the costs. That's including uh, kind of everything. I'm not sure if it includes uh, the cost of putting in the charging. Um, but yeah, exactly. it's, and that's uh, interesting. Weirdly, it's saying that the cost per mile is the same, which I don't know Doesn't how that's possible. Sense. Yeah. Uh, but this is based on a very early first generation kind of thing. Now, BYD, uh, so, BYD is very big in school buses. Uh, in school buses, okay. Well, well yeah, I know they've yeah. got their big bus plant in yeah. Los Angeles. They've got another one in Europe. They've got, they're right. all over the world. They've got, right. I think, six or seven of them. Yeah, they make, they're, they're a big maker on the bus, on the bus front, yes. So uh, those are all big bits of news. Um, can you think of advantages? to an electric school bus, and I will extend this to the audience as well, over a regular diesel bus. At that same show that you went, and I went to in San Diego, they also had uh, electric uh, boat, you know, small boat, you know, pleasure, pleasure craft boats. Yes. Um, this is a, apparently, again, just saw a headline, didn't read the whole article, but uh, this seemed like such an obvious one to me, not only, I mean, sure, the noise, can be fun, but you don't need the noise to have fun in a pleasure craft and torque and expense and no fumes and no, you know, I mean, it just goes on and on all the benefits. So this, and apparently it's really, it is catching on. As a kid, I'm sure you remember as clearly as I do right now in my head, I can smell the diesel fumes sitting on the bus. Let's not give our kids fumes to huff down. Yes. Um, and it's a good for the application because you know how many miles your route is. Uh, it's very unlikely for a school bus on a daily route to do more than 100 miles, 200 miles for sure. And then you've got hours to recharge during the middle of the day, all night to recharge, with the biggest obstacle being getting enough juice to the depot. But considering how slow this transition is, I think we can make that work. Um, two more stories to get to on this. California DMV gears up to allow driverless trucks amid calls to hit the brakes on high-tech big rigs. Well, we know the kinds of lobbyists who don't want autonomy. Um, no need to give them too much airtime. But what do you think about this? The idea of a uh, driverless semis rolling around in the grape state of California. They yeah. call it that. They call it the grape state because of all the vineyards, I think. I see. Is that what I said? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the grape pretty state. sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I know that it could be called the truck state because uh, there are certainly uh, bajillions of them on our freeways. So um, I am all for, of course, the electrification and the automation of uh, trucks in the state of California can't, can't come soon enough. Well, and you know what, uh, what your state, uh, what your state flower is, right? Oh, no. It's a California cloverleaf. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't, oh, you didn't know that. Uh, in the, in the comments, uh, what do you think of that joke? <laughs> but also, what do you think of, uh, what do you think of driverless trucks actually being authorized for use? 
Last one I'm going to share with you, Randy. This one's pretty fun. Share this tab. This is a company called Envo, and this is their UPT. Uh, this little skateboard is an actual platform skateboard. You can build it that way, that way. You can build it a bunch of different ways, um, just reconfiguring it. And these folks are going to be at the Everything Electric show this weekend. Um, they are. They have invited me personally to come and check them out, which I'll be doing. And here, here's it in use, actual <laughs> physical ones and not just renders. So we've got... I mean, how cool is that? Yeah. So the idea is you could put anything on it. You could wow. make it that. You could make it on-road, off-road, standing, sitting, uh, cargo, passengers. It can be kind of whatever. Wow. Very cool. So, yeah. Very cool. So that is an interesting one. My question for you in the comments, and guys, yes, this video is going to have a lot of comments, is what should I ask them? What do you want to know about this, uh, about this fine little little rig oh so uh yeah head over to randy's channel see what he's up to everybody else like subscribe do all those good things that you do if you get an opportunity uh you are uh legally allowed uh, to show some support on patreon as a patron on youtube as a channel member on x as a subscriber or you can use my referral bone uh credit referral link to get a thousand dollars off your new tesla and apparently that also works if you're just doing a lease which is great so uh there you go what do we miss what do we misunderstand leave it i beg of you do leave it and uh yeah stay tuned stay juicy cannot wait to hear from you clever robots perhaps in vancouver this weekend